Hey everybody, Father Warner here. Uh, we are in Thursday of the seventh week in Eastertide. Um, in two days, we will enter the Feast of the Pentecost and with that, we come to the end of the Easter season. Uh, but as I said to you yesterday, we are going to be galloping through the Acts of the Apostles. Yesterday we were in chapter 20. Today our text is from chapter 22, verse 30, but even more from, sorry, from chapter, yes, 22, verse 30, but even more from uh, chapter 23, verses 6 to 11. Now, I must insist that you pause this video and read chapters 20. 21 and 22. I'm going to cover it for you, but I would greatly appreciate if you do it because Paul, as we know, has come to the end of his missionary journey. Uh, he has uh, covered three, what we call three missionary journeys. The last one was a way uh, the, where he went through Asia, modern day, or rather uh, what we would call modern day Turkey. He's gone through Asia. This was the place he evangelized on his first missionary journey. So really he goes to strengthen the churches that he evangelized. And now he comes to um, Caesarea. And we are told that while he is in Caesarea, uh, he is in the house of Philip the Evangelist, uh, referred to as one of the seven. Uh, you can look at verse 8 of uh, chapter 21. We are told that a prophet by the name of Agabus comes and meets Paul and Agabus tells Paul, look, he says, he takes off Paul's belt and he ties his own hands and his own feet and he says, the Holy Spirit has, has revealed to me that the man who owns this belt will be bound, will be handed over to the Gentiles by the very Jews. Basically, he was saying, you'll be put to death. And we are told that at once there's a great amount of weeping and crying and people don't want Paul to go to Jerusalem. And Paul says, what are you doing? He says, weeping and breaking my heart, for I'm ready not only to be bound, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of our Lord Jesus. And so Paul arrives in Jerusalem. Now, when he arrives in Jerusalem, he is met by St. James. He's received very warmly. We are told this in verse 17. He's received very warmly. But St. James, who's the head of the church in Jerusalem, tells Paul, and here I'm now going to, uh, you know, be a little liberal in my expressions. He tells Paul, he says, look, he says, you know, whatever you did in Gentile territory uh, on your missionary journeys, that's great. But we have a problem here with you because the messaging that has been going around in Jerusalem is that you are a person you teach all the Jews about um, abandoning, forsake, forsaking Moses, and you teach the Jews not to circumcise their children. So there has been a lot of negativity, Paul, against you. So James, St. James says, look, why don't you go to the temple? You know, four of our guys are going to go there. They've made a vow. Why don't you accompany them? You know, perform the rites of purification and why don't you even pay for the shaving of their heads? So Paul, for some reason, here's a man who always fought, uh, you know, uh, these silly traditions. Uh, here is Paul who for some reason succumbs and maybe he felt, well, you know, there's a greater cause to be served. But when he arrives in the temple of Jerusalem, he spends seven days there. Uh, he is even seen with two Greek men whose names are mentioned in chapter 21. Uh, when he arrives there and finishes his seven days of purification, some of the Jews who were in Asia, in modern day Turkey, who, who, were, who took uh, offense to what he had said there about circumcision and who spot him now in the temple of Jerusalem, they raise an alarm and they say, look, here is the man who has been teaching our people to go away from the laws of Moses. But even more, they bring a false charge against him. They said he has brought two Greeks into the, uh, in, into the temple. Now, you see, the temple had uh, several courtyards. You had uh, the courtyard of the Gentiles, and you had the court of the women, the court of the men, and the 
holy of holy a non jew could not go beyond the court of the gentiles in fact there was a board on the door that warned you that you would be put to death and so uh, there's a riot because people not only has uh, paul been accused of breaking the laws of moses and teaching others not to be not to circumcise their children now the the accusation is that he has brought two gentiles into the temple there is a riot we are told and uh, the tribune brings in uh, all the soldiers he is bound with two chains he is brought into the barracks and the people shout the very words that they shouted for jesus you can see that in uh, verse 36 of chapter 21 they say away with him but paul appeals he says you know he tells the tribune look i am a jew i am from a respectable city an important city of tarsus give me an opportunity to talk to these people and he begins to address them in fact he gives his testimony he tells them how he encountered jesus on the way to jerusalem how jesus spoke to him uh, look at chapter 22 Uh, verses seven onwards, he says, "I fell to the ground. I heard a voice saying, 'Saul, why are you persecuting me?'" He shares his testimony of what happened to him, and then he shares his mission that God gave him to the Gentiles. Verse twenty-one of chapter twenty-two. Then he said to me, "Go forth. I will send you far away to the Gentiles." Now, on hearing the word Gentiles, it was like. you know somebody took a stone and threw it at a beehive because all the bees were now agitated the jews are once again tremendously agitated and we are told that uh, he is therefore arrested once again he is tied with thongs and um, he's about to be flogged and that's where paul looks um, up and he says you know do you know i'm a roman citizen now at this uh, we know that the tribune was terrified because he himself had bought his citizenship we know this from verse 28 the tribune answered it cost me a large sum of money to get my citizenship well as paul did not have to buy his citizenship he was a roman citizen and he could not therefore be arrested in this manner without a fair trial he could not be flogged the tribune now was in big trouble and so paul is released we are told but the tribune in order to sort the matter uh, says why don't we meet with the chief priests um, and all the entire council and so we come to chapter 23 the text of today paul is brought there he begins by saying look you know i have a clear conscience before god and the high priest uh, indicates to some of his followers give him a good slap on the mouth we are told that the high priest ananias ordered those standing near him to strike him in the mouth now paul is such a bold chap he says god will strike you you white washed wall <laughs> you know sometimes you must have the courage to tell even leaders in the church you are a white washed wall yeah god will strike you be careful don't we priests we bishops we cardinals we should never use our power against the laity we should speak the truth you should speak the truth but never use your power god given power because god has given us that power to look after the sheep not strike the sheep or get others you know in the parish council to strike that sheep who uh, opposes us so um Paul now realizes he doesn't stand a chance in this council. Paul is a clever man. And he looks around and he sees that there are some Pharisees and there are some Sadducees. And Paul says, "Hey guys, I am a Pharisee. And I'm on trial because I believe in the resurrection, because I believe in the angels. This is what the Pharisees believe. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection and in the angels and we are told you know paul is so clever he sets the cat among the pigeons and at once we are told that there is a division in the group now uh, paul is going to be in prison for in uh, jerusalem for the next 2 years tomorrow when you read the text 
uh, of chapter 23, you'll see that there was a plot to kill him. Paul has to then be moved to Caesarea. And in the days to come, you will hear how Paul, who is burning with the desire to make Jesus known, cannot spend his days in prison. So what does he do? He appeals to Rome. He's a Roman citizen. And finally, he will be taken to Rome, where we know from tradition that Paul will be beheaded. Uh, I've anticipated a lot, but I encourage you to read the text. Now, I want to end this uh, teaching today with verse 11 of our text today. That night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Keep up your courage, for just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness in Rome. You know, when I read this, I was praying in my chapel. I have a little chapel here with the Blessed Sacrament. And when I was praying in preparation for this text, what struck me was, I said, Lord, you know, why is it that you burden those who work for you with more? And sometimes those who are suffering, you burden them with much more. Jesus says to Paul very clearly, courage, you have borne witness for me in Jerusalem. I'm going to demand much more for you in, in Rome. And while Paul is going to testify in Rome, Paul is also going to be beheaded in Rome. But I want to say this to all of you. We are citizens of heaven. Our earthly home is temporary. And whatever we may gain here is in its finality going to be valued in heaven by God. So I want to end this teaching by saying to you, if you are struggling in your own life, Take heart, be of courage. God, who has placed a burden on you, has weighed you, he has measured you, and he shares that burden with you while you struggle. So may God bless you, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to like this video, to share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.